Now that you have an idea of the importance of public speaking, where it can be used and the impact it can have on your presence, let's dive into how to become a successful public speaker. Be authentic. Authenticity is a powerful tool for any public speaker. It allows you to connect with your audience on a much deeper level by building trust and building rapport with them. When you speak from the heart and share your own experiences, opinions and emotions, you show your audience that you are a real person with real feelings and experiences just like them. This kind of honesty and vulnerability can be intimidating for some speakers, especially if they are used to presenting themselves in a more polished, professional and perfect manner. But the truth is, audiences respond much more positively to speakers who are authentic and true to themselves. They want to hear from someone who is genuine, relatable and real and not someone who's trying to put on a show. One of the most effective ways to be authentic in your public speaking is to establish a connection through relatable content, personal anecdotes and relevant examples. For example, if you're a leader speaking to a group of employees, you might share a personal story about a time when you faced a challenge or failure in your own career and how you overcame it. By sharing your own struggles and victories, you show your audience that you understand what they are going through. And you're comfortable to share your own learnings to help them navigate through such situations. So well, I'm going to share one of my personal experiences with you on uh, public speaking. Way back in 2017, I was invited to speak on a TEDx platform by UPS Dehradun. And I went there and I was given the time of 19 minutes. I practiced, planned, prepared my speech, keeping that time frame in mind. And when I landed up there and just before I was about to get onto the stage, I was told that the speech has been reduced by six minutes and now it's going to be 13 minutes. And that was quite a shocker for me because everything was planned, everything was practiced, every word was important from that script. But I managed, I delivered the talk and I made sure that all the uh, people who were sitting there got value from the topic that I was covering. However, uh, after the speech, I wasn't feeling very good because there were times I had gone back to the podium to refer to my speech as I wanted to make sure that I wanted to cover all the vital points. So what I'm trying to say here is that every time the speech may not go perfectly, but it's all right as long as you're doing it, as long as, uh, as, long as you're practicing it, it's absolutely fine. It's like riding a bicycle or swimming. You have to do it several times over to become perfect. But that was then. And one of my um, assignments that happened maybe around 2019, when I was delivering a talk for a major um, consulting firm, and you know how technology is and my laptop wouldn't open and I couldn't project my slides. But having said that, I was facing 500 employees of this organization and I had to speak and I have to put up a show. So I continued because I had practiced and I had planned, I had to perform. So I went on with the presentation and half of the presentation was over by the time the laptop could be projected up. Okay. Uh, so again, what I'm trying to say here is that even if you fail the first few times, you will come out as a winner. If you continue to do this, continue to face your fears, continue to practice, continue to perform. It is important that in every situation you remain authentic and real. Being authentic doesn't mean that you have to share every intimate detail of your life with your audience. It's important to use good judgment and keep your audience in mind when deciding what to share and how much to share. But by being honest about your experiences, opinions, and emotions, you can create a powerful connection with your audience and inspire them to make positive changes in their own lives. Use humor. Whether you're giving a presentation, leading a team, or just trying to connect with people, incorporating humor can be an effective way to engage your audience and make your message more memorable. The key is to use humor 
in a way that is appropriate and respectful. While humor can be a great way to break the ice and lighten the mood, it's important to avoid offensive jokes or comments that could be hurtful to others. A leader who uses humor effectively is able to connect with the audience and create a more relaxed and enjoyable atmosphere. One of my recent workshops where I was addressing 500 senior real estate professionals and the workshop was about sales and selling skills, etc. There was a question I posed to the audience. I asked them, what exactly is sales? And one of them said that sales is an art. And for people, so this was all done in Hindi. So I'd like to use that to, to tell you what exactly happened. So the question was, ki sales kya hai? And the answer came, ki sales kala hai. And my response was, and I wanted to add humor. So my response was, ki agar sales kala hai, to kalakar to banna hi padega. And the moment I said that, you know, the, the, the entire room was filled with claps and whistles because they resonated with that and they felt good about hearing this. So for people who don't understand Hindi, I'm going to translate this into English. What is sales? Sales is an art, which means, and my response was that if sales is an art, then you've got to be an artist. And everybody in the room clapped and whistled because they loved the response and they were able to relate with that. So humor is used in a way that is appropriate and helps to break the ice making it easier for everyone to communicate and work together effectively. Use storytelling. Stories are very helpful in conveying any message and they have been used throughout history to teach, inspire and entertain people. When you tell a story, you engage your audience on an emotional level and that can help them to remember your message more effectively. In a business context, storytelling can be an effective way to communicate important information to your team or customers. So, using an example of a real estate professional who's trying to sell a high-end residential apartment uh, could probably use a story something like this, you know, um, take the uh, prospect to the balcony overlooking the golf course and tell them to imagine standing there having their hot coffee and visualize how it would feel when there is lush green golf course right in front of them and the morning sun is shining light on them. Storytelling is really about painting a picture which means that you're not just telling them something but you are able to help them visualize what you are saying and uh, help them imagine how it would look like. Help them connect with their emotions to that part of your story. Ultimately, storytelling is about connecting with your audience by arousing emotions in them. Do you remember? As kids, whenever we heard once upon a time, there was a king and the queen, and we would be hooked to that because we wanted to know what's going to happen next. So there is an element of mystery. There is an element of suspense. There is an element. And the moment you say there was a king and the queen and they had a large palace, you start imagining and visualizing that. So don't tell everything that you want to tell, but also show to them what you're trying to tell them. And that's the art of storytelling. When you use stories to convey your message, you are not just sharing information, you are creating a shared experience. You're creating and that can bring people together and help them to learn and grow in an easier way. So don't be afraid to use storytelling as a tool in your leadership and communication efforts. Use pause. A pause is a brief moment of silence that you intentionally insert into your speech. It may seem counterintuitive but taking a moment to pause can actually enhance the impact of your message. Let me tell you how. Firstly, a pause can give your audience time to reflect on what you have just said. By creating a space for contemplation, you give your listeners the opportunity to process the information you've shared with them. Pause can also add emphasis and demonstrate that you have control. By strategically placing a pause, 
before or after a particularly important point, you can draw attention. Taking a pause can even help you to maintain control over your speech. When you're nervous or speaking quickly, by taking a pause, you can gather your thoughts and refocus your attention, which can help you to stay on track and avoid losing your trail of thought. Actively use the power of your tone. Most of us do not actively and intelligently use our tonality to our advantage. We use the words to convey the message and conveniently miss out putting emotions and feelings to those words, which is a primary job of your tone. We all have the toolbox, but we don't use it. When it comes to public speaking, it's not only about words that you say, but also about the tone you use to express the emotions behind those words. If you speak in a monotone voice, your audience is likely to tune out and lose interest in what you're saying. On the other hand, if you use variation in your tone and inflection, it can help you emphasize key points, engage your audience and keep them interested and focused. Think about it this way. If you're listening to a speaker who sounds bored or disinterested in what they're saying, how likely are you to stay engaged and interested? Probably not very likely. But if the speaker sounds passionate, enthusiastic and confident, you are much more likely to be interested and engaged. Use your body language. Your body language can convey a lot of information about your message and your emotional state. It is so important that it can almost make or break your public speaking skills. Have you ever been in a situation where someone said something to you, but their body language conveyed an opposite message? It can be confusing, right? That's why it's important to make sure your body language is in sync with what you're saying. In a public speaking setting, if you stand at just one place, don't use any gestures or have the same expression for a long time, this may create boredom. While moving too quickly, using too many gestures or excessive expressions may also confuse the audience. Strike a balance between too less and too much. Stand straight, equally distribute weight on both feet. Move when you have to. Use open hand gestures. Make eye contact, smile. Express your emotions through facial expressions and take your space, so open up, move around. Becoming an impactful public speaker is not an overnight process. But with time, effort and practice, anyone can become a skilled communicator. By following the six tips we've just discussed, you can begin to develop your own unique speaking style. Engage your audience and leave a lasting impression. And above all, the three E's that are extremely, extremely important and are non-negotiables in any of your public speaking assignments are energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. Your public speech will create less or no impact in the absence of all these three. So don't be afraid to experiment with different techniques, take risks, and most importantly, be authentic.